practice out there. We did. We we uh, just practiced in helmets. Uh, thought we got a lot accomplished. You know, Washington State. They're excellent on offense. Um, they had an anomaly last week, um, and uh, they just uh, they're excellent offense on defense. They're stemming and moving everywhere, um, and playing good defense. They played good defense last year too. I think they're a very good football team. I think they're um, better than they were last year. does a good job with them, and Mike's press conference is always interesting. So, <laughs> Mike, was last weekend just an example of how tough it was to win on the road in the Pac-12? Yeah, the Pac-12 the the yeah, Pac is extremely hard to win anytime you play. Everybody can beat anybody any any Saturday, and uh, I think you're seeing that all the time in, in our conference. And uh, you're well, seeing all over the country, but you're seeing it in our conference. Uh, last week was a good example of it. Thank you. So anybody can beat anybody on any Saturday. So you got to show up and, and play really well to win. What makes uh, you know, Washington State so much better on defense? You know, uh, Brent just coming in and done a good job. It seems like they're bringing you know, a lot more aggressive well, than they got, have in the last They've got years. most of their players back from last year. Um, so they're better at the system. Even their backups that were you know played quite a bit with had injuries. Um, and uh, you know he, he does a good job with them. You know I think that they when their offense is scoring it. They they able to do a little more exotic stuff on the front, and stunt, and do that type of thing, and create plays. Um, and uh, I think that, that you know, that's definitely helping them. But he's done an excellent job with them. The kids they play really hard, um, and their, their corners seem a little more aggressive this year to me, playing a little bit better uh, press coverage and that type of thing. And I think that's helped eliminate um, some getting some third downs on them and keeping the drives going. I think that's really, a, to me, that's the area that looks like to me they've improved the most on. Because last year, 50 was stunting through and making plays, and their linebackers, but their, their secondary was good. But I think they've gone up a notch there. They're playing a lot tighter coverage, and I think that's helped them. How big are the challenges of a game like this for Steven with all the stunting they do? I mean, is, yeah, he, is he going to be able to yeah. recognize all that? Uh, I, I, he better. <laughs> he better be able to recognize everything, you know, and hopefully we'll get keys that we can make it easy. You can't, you can't see all 11 moving. You got to have certain keys you're looking on in certain situations. You know, our offensive line's got to be able to handle all that. And uh, our center's got to be able to communicate that. And they stem every snap. Um, and so something that uh, we'll work on all week. And we, we did well against it last year. And hopefully we can do well against it this year. Uh, but they're a little bit better than they were last year. With the way Phillip is running, are you becoming even more of a ball control offense, kind of a clock eating offense than, than maybe you thought you would be? Well, I think you know you, we're, we're going where our strengths are, and, uh, and he's he's done a, a great job for us running the football, and uh, you know we're it helps the defense too stay off the field and to try to stay fresh, uh, which you know and the fresher you are, we you know we're not playing a ton of guys on defense. We've had some injuries, we had especially in the D line, had some different things that have happened to us there. We're a little thinner on the defensive line than we were earlier in the year, and even when we were in camp, we thought we'd have a few more guys that we had out there to rotate in. It's really been good having George Frazier rotate in. We're playing him on offense too, but he, he's doing an excellent job. So yeah, it has helped us. You were talking about the offensive line. You had a rotation of Isaac Miller and Aaron Hagler in there for a bit, uh -huh. and then kind of switched back and forth. You want to talk about what you've seen from those guys? Uh, they're they're doing well. I, I thought they protected um, well the other day. I thought they did a good job, uh, and uh, both of those young men are getting better every week. They really are. They really work hard. They're really smart. They're big. They're athletic, and you know, just they're just getting better and better. Was that rotation by design or? Uh, well, we knew we were going to rotate them both, and it just depends on different things we were doing during the game. From, from a developmental standpoint, how is quarterback Sam Miller progressed? Uh, Sam's getting better and better. Um, you know, he, he can make all the throws. He's learning the offense, getting a ton of reps out here in practice, and uh, been pleased with um, with Sam's uh, progress. Washington State had been rolling. What, what did uh -huh. you see that went wrong in that Cal game? Was it a pass protection well, issue? Well, I'll tell you, they were moving the ball on Cal quite often. They moved the ball really well. Then they'd have a fumble. Uh, you know, they, they threw some interceptions. The ball got tipped in the air and caught. You know, there, there was some weird, there was like three really weird lucky plays in a way. Cal made them, but they were kind of weird, crazy plays that really hurt um, uh, Washington State. But they were moving the football. It wasn't like they just got stymied. It was a turnover situation, and you know you lose a turnover battle that that drastic, um, it's not going to be a very close game. Um, so that that to me was the whole situation was just the turnovers. Have you ever coached in a game where the air quality was so bad like that that fans were in masks? Uh, no, I haven't. I hope I never have to. I hope. I
hope I never have to. That, that was, it's been tragic for all of California and other parts of our country too. Um, but that's been really rough. My son goes to school in Southern California at Chapman University and they had to close their school for a day and all that. Um, so luckily it blew out of there, but uh, um, yeah, it, it's tough, it's tough. I was talking to Trey last week and he said that he felt that the coaches felt Dante was playing better, so Dante was put in there. What did you guys see from Dante and is that, should Don's personnel call or is that yours? Uh, no, I mean, basically every call is mine, but it all comes down to it. Um, now, I listen to everybody and we discuss and we go through everything. You know, Trey had done a good job. Um, I thought Dante had done a good job. It was just kind of one of those things. And, Don, and Trey's playing on special teams for us and Trey can be in there at a drop of head. They've been rotating even number of reps every practice. Um, so it's just kind of how it worked out as the game went along. What similarities in game planning do you see between prepping for Josh Rosen and now prepping for Luke Falk? Wow, it, it's a total different offense. It's a um, total different offense. You know, um, uh, Josh, they, you know, they had a great tight end, UCLA did. They ran two backs a lot with a tight end type of thing. It's a whole different process. Um, this is a, a system, um, you know, they're getting the ball out of his hands. Uh, it's a 10 personnel, so it's, there's always open sets. Uh, and, you know, the other thing is, a big difference is everything's done out of the gun, and uh, the quarterback is checking everything in uh, Leach's system. Leach gives him a call, and he checks. It might even be the same, even close to the same call they're looking for. You know, I know they have certain things he's looking for. He tells him to check, and certain things that he wouldn't run. But he's he's thinking as Leach would. You know, they're not a look to the sidelines or do it. The quarterback does it all, um, and uh, he he does an excellent job at it. Does an excellent job at it. He can make every throw. Some throws he made out here last year were amazing to me. He threw it before the guys even came out of their breaks, like 35 yards downfield, and they hit like one yard from the sidelines. I go, how did he do that? Um, so we're going to have to be all over him. He's going to make some plays, and hopefully, um, hopefully we can uh, slow him down enough, and hopefully cause enough turnovers to be able to make a difference. Because that's really how you stop him. You cause a few turnovers and make him kick some field goals. Bryce had been kicking most of his kickoffs into the end zone until Saturday. Uh -huh. Did he just kind of have an off game, or was that by, by design? Yeah, he definitely had an off game, um, and hopefully he won't. You know, we also played at not at altitude, which sometimes that bothers him. Um, wish it wouldn't have bothered. As much as it did, hopefully he'll kick uh, a better this week. Coach, you were talking about that anticipation throw, those anticipation throws yep. from Luke Falk. Where has Steven progressed in that, and how much is that kind of like a graduate level yeah, quarterback? Um, yeah, it, it, well, it is a little bit of a graduate level, there's no doubt. Um, Falk wasn't doing that as much earlier in his career, and now he is, and it's just a repetition and working with those guys. Um, Steven's made a few of those. Um, a couple of those touchdowns to Bryce were that, more of a Bang eight, we call it, but it's on timing. As you see it, you're letting it go before he even already gets his head around. And uh, he, he's doing a good job on that. And there's some other throws to make, but hopefully we'll see more and more of those um, as he keeps progressing.